Hello, I'm Ramey. And I'm Beth, his little sister. Welcome to Brother News Quest, a podcast about tabletop role-playing games. I am going to explain some game mechanics and settings to my sister, and she, at the end, will tell me more about what she might think about it, if she would ever want to play it, or any of that stuff. So, Beth, are you ready to start? I'm ready. Okay, here's the first one. I'm going to pull out of this bag, and you tell me if you've ever heard of it. Dungeons and Dragons. Yes, Dungeons and Dragons. You've heard of it, I'm guessing? Yeah. Okay. I watched Big Bang Theory. Yes, and we played it a lot for a while. It was my first tabletop role-playing game. I'm sure it was yours. I believe it was, and I enjoyed it. I enjoy it, too. To be fair, I can say that the coming up with the character part was the hardest part. It took some time, but once you get through that, it actually became good. A lot of people think that is the funnest part. I have a backlog of characters I don't think I'll ever be able to use. Uh, It might be because you aren't as knowledgeable about the rules. (laughs) Well, that's true. That that Um, is very true. It would probably have been easier for me, considering I didn't know anything about it. And considering I didn't know anything about it, I wasn't really interested in it. And I was just like, hey, yeah, sure, I'll do it. It probably would have been easier if I had a character already made. Yeah, you didn't play back when I first started playing with the starter set. Uh, We had pre-made characters. We added you into the game later, and we made you a character who turned out to be a, I believe it was a... Tiefling. Mm -hmm. Tiefling? Yes, it was a, uh, uh, what is the word I'm hunting for? Uh, Rogue. Yes, you stabbed folks and then flew away. Yeah, I was the coward. Yep. (laughs) Okay, but... Did you know, I want to tell you a little bit about the game. I mean, you know the basic rules. You've played enough to know the basic rules. Uh, This is the fifth edition of the game. You and me both have skipped um, a few in between there. We have never played, you have never played any of the original ones. Uh, That wasn't the original? The fifth edition isn't the original. It's called fifth edition. I didn't know it was the fifth edition. So that wasn't the original I was playing? The game was originally a companion piece to like a war game. You have miniatures and you have armies. It's like a very complicated chess with minis, what it is now. It's a role-playing game. So in 1971, Chainmill was a game where you played with minis. And this is a branch off of it. Uh, Okay, so you had like a tabletop of maps and these little physical characters. They weren't even characters. They were nameless pieces like armies. They were supposed to be entire armies. Okay, so pieces like not dolls, but no, like Monopoly pieces. Yeah, but the, each of them are kind of simple unless they're like the, you know, the version of pawns, I'd call it. The foot soldiers are the common ones. And you have all the more complicated pieces. I haven't personally played a war game, so I can't say much about it. I know Warhammer is kind of like that. But there are war games? Oh yeah, they still make them. Uh, Warhammer is a big one, but this isn't Warhammer. And Chainmail, I've never played Chainmail. See, I think more about dragons and medieval times when it comes to this kind of thing. The name of the game was allegedly chosen by Gary Gygax's two-year-old daughter, Cindy. Cindy? From a list of possible titles. Yeah. I'm not sure that is, like I said, allegedly. That's what the Wikipedia says. You'll hear the name Gary Gygax come up a lot because he is the guy who was originally pretty much the creator. There's another. Basically, the guy who you associate with Dungeons and Dragons as we know it today. It is owned by Wizards of the Coast now, who are owned by Hasbro. You know, Monopoly, that Hasbro. I get mad during Monopoly. Yeah, she can't play Monopoly. There's been a lot of other media that has branched off from Dungeons and Dragons. Just most recently, there's a movie that's dropped, Honor Among Thieves. I watched it. It was actually very good, especially for like comedy. Yeah, it was funny. Thumbershard, I think is his name, the dragon. Yeah, he rolled around the Was lot that and- the, the chunky one? Yeah. She was like, that is one chunky dragon <laughs> yeah. something like that yes he was it, a, a it was very good he was a certainly a standout yes. red dragon amongst other red dragons there's also a bunch of video games like Baldur's gate and everyone of nights never heard like of that. them well i didn't think you would have you're not mm. into that scene very <laughs> often uh there's been cartoons i believe it was the 80s there was D cartoons some of the people in the movie remember the people in the maze that was uh, with them The The trapped ones? uh, They weren't trapped. That's the escape area. That's where you can lock yourself in so people, things can't hurt you. Uh, But you're still trapped. Yeah. There's a cage. Well, they are the characters from the cartoon. (laughs) It's an Easter egg. It's an Easter egg? 
Yes. So these trapped individuals. They're not really trapped. They can open the door and go out if they want to face the displacer beast. So they just don't because they don't want to yes, face they them? Yes. So they're that's the finish. That's the finish line for the maze. And then the next game starts after the maze part is complete. Whoever's in that, move on to the next part of the game. It never got to that part in the movie, though. Because <clears throat> nobody's ever, that I can think of, won those games because they're a slaughter. <laughs> so they're stuck in this cell, we'll say. And they won't leave because they're afraid of... Yeah, that's the finish line. Because the maze that you've seen in the movie isn't the only part. There's multiple parts to this game. But the thing is, nobody that he could think of has ever won. If you recall, he said nobody ever survived. It's just like the gladiatorial events, only less survivors. I don't know what the next part of the game would be. Probably wouldn't amaze, but they would have had to have done that. That's why they decided just to not bother with that escape route. Because they done something so else. these people didn't live. Uh, it's assumed that they didn't because they were probably in that cage when she turned everybody into zombies on the floor. But no, you know how to make D&D character. You create your character from the player's handbook. It's not so difficult if you just kind of go See, through I've the steps. See, I've done that. And to be honest, that is the most difficult part. That is honestly the part that makes me be like, I don't want to do this. Yeah. But there are also options like you can go online and with the AI thing, you can ask it what you want for a character. And it can help you with that. We, and I didn't have that when I first started. When you first introduced this to me, I didn't have that. So I had to come up with it myself, which is pretty difficult. I had a whole binder <laughs> <laughs> to come up with this character. And I chose the Tiefling or Tiefling. Is it Tiefling? I feel like it's Tiefling. Pretty sure her I wanted to always say Tiefling. I know. But I feel like it's Tiefling. It's you that caused me to start saying Tiefling occasionally. When you introduced me to this whole thing, that's the character I wanted to be. And you, so, I don't think you play. I tried to get you to play a druid once and you didn't. And now that I watched that movie, I kind of feel like I should have chose Druid. She watched the <laughs> tiefling girl in the movie turn into all kinds of animals and wondered why she couldn't because she was a tiefling too. But I, I to, was a rogue. I had to explain that you were a rogue, not a druid, and that's not her tiefling blood doing that. <laughs> I had to get information as to why I couldn't do that. Yeah. I'm kind of ignorant on the subject. That's why we have the podcast. Exactly. That's why we have this podcast. D&D is the baseline. It is. But the, that movie, as much as people want to hate it, it was A lot of people liked hilarious. it. I, mean, it, I haven't heard many complaints. The worst complaints I've heard is that they thought it wasn't as exciting as they thought. It wasn't bad. It just wasn't exciting. But I liked it. I guess maybe if you've been doing this for a while, but personally, me, I found it to be hilarious. That was a good movie. And it made me more interested. Well, that's what their intent was. You become interested in the movie, leave the theater, go straight to the game store and buy up some new player handbooks. Yeah, I got a big brother that does that. Yeah, I have quite a few odds and ends like that. Yeah. D&D is the baseline. You say Dungeons and Dragons. If you're playing any other game and you want to introduce it to somebody who's not familiar with tabletop role-playing game, they say, what are you talking about? And you say, you've heard of Dungeons and Dragons? Because people probably have from Big Bang Theory or Stranger Things. I actually haven't watched mm -hmm. Stranger Things. Everybody keeps saying... It's a good it's a good show. Yeah, uh, everybody keeps saying it's a good show. You'd love to watch it. That's something you would be interested in. The newest books coming out here soon from Wizards of the Coast for Dungeons and Dragons are kind of in a roundabout way connected to Stranger Things and the latest big villain they had in it. It's going to be a... I don't know the big villain. Yes, I ain't going to talk about it because you, you need to watch Spoiler it. Spoiler alert, I'm guessing. Yeah, but it's a good escape. Playing D&D... I mean, the rules of D20 system, so you roll a D20, and then you are a modifier is added to it from your, let's say, strength save. Your character has a strength save, as you know, or whatever kind of thing you want to do. There's a skill attached to it that you have a modifier for. But there's branches off those skills, like uh, under wisdom you have, rel not religion, under wisdom you have. I imagine there is some spiritual things yes uh, going on in that nature though. is under wisdom so if you're a druid you should probably have some nature and wisdom of course from that but uh, i feel like there's some spiritual maybe not christianity but i'm pretty some sure spiritual religion the skill religion is under intelligence 
That's under intelligence. Yeah. I always wondered that as well. I'm pretty sure also. I guess that makes sense in that area. Yes. It makes being a cleric, which uses wisdom, interesting. In this version of the game, 5th edition, the most common setting, there's multiple settings. You have Eberron and Dragonlance and all that. But What's the, an Eberron? It's a, it's a, well, think of more almost verging on a uh, steampunk, but not quite setting for D&D. <laughs> My fiance Joey actually plays this game. I forgot what it's called. It's cyberpunk. Yeah, that sounds right. By the way, one of the later episodes is going to be on the original version of that game, which was a tabletop role playing game. It was a role playing game. It was originally a tabletop role playing game. Still is. So it wasn't just originally an Xbox game. No, it was always a tabletop role playing game until just the other year, a couple of years ago. The current fifth edition, the location that the game takes place in, is. Faerun, it's in the Forgotten Realms on the Sword Coast of Faerun. It's more of a... Faerun, mm, Forgotten Realms. Yes, it's more of a high fantasy setting. Uh, like that's where we played it. fairies. And- yes, fairies. Uh, you know we played the Lost Minds of Fandelver. That's where we played our game. That was the starter set. And you might have played some of the Curse of Strahd with us. I'm not sure. You all eventually completed the starter set. You had children with your current boyfriend. All that good stuff. and um, Not boyfriend now. No. It's a, it's a fun game, and it's a good escape. That's what these games are about. Escape uh, for a lot of people, too. Yeah. My or, gnome children did great. Yes. Even did. though I wasn't a gnome. Neither was and her neither boyfriend. neither was he. Yeah. That was a rough time. They were all sorcerers. But to be fair, the children are very interesting. Um, he <laughs> wasn't. <laughs> But as it's used as an escape, it's popular in some prisons, oddly enough. You know, imagine being stuck in prison. You don't have much to do. No, imagine playing. You got to make up your own things. Yeah, so imagine having these books and just some dice to do your own thing. Like you, it's a good escape. And it's good. Uh, it's been looked into recently. It might be helpful for some mental health reasons. I, I'm not professional in that, so I don't know. Okay, well, I'm not a professional in mental health either, but I can definitely come up with my own fantasy worlds to release myself from the reality. So I imagine (laughs) if I was in prison, I would for sure be going towards this kind of thing. Yes. Well, it also might interest you to know that certain areas of Chicago have banned it in their prisons because with someone like- Well, Chicago also had what they said- was a cow that burned most of their city at one point. I don't blame the cow. I don't know. I blame the person that let the cow knock a lantern over. Why were you trying to milk a cow in the middle of the night? Babies get thirsty. I don't know. What do you mean babies get thirsty? They were trying to milk a cow in the middle of the night. That's not a baby. Yeah, I know. I have no idea. I know nothing about that. I knew Chicago burned, but I didn't know why. It was a cow called Betsy. Betsy's arson. But no, it was banned in some prisons. They took it to court to try and get it back. Why would that be banned in prisons? The game was banned on behest of a prison specialist in gangs. He said that having a person like the dungeon master, who is tasked with giving directions to the players, which the expert testified mimics the organization of a gang. I was thinking as you said that, they thought it was a gang, didn't they? They thought it might be dangerous and become one. I don't think it had yet. I I didn't look into this too much. I was surprised when I found it. Okay, to be fair, I've never heard of any news articles or anything that said, role-playing game went wrong. (laughs) No, I should say that um, (laughs) D&D was at the, uh, well, during the 80s, it was what was called the Satanic Panic. Everybody thought they were Satanists around the corner. Trying to sacrifice them Young or their children. Young Sheldon. Yeah, the satanic panic. Young Sheldon in that show, his mother said it was... Satanist. Yeah, like a Satan thing. Yeah. Oh, There's uh, demons on the cover of the book or whatever. There, I think there was. But it became a big scare. But either and way, that it was doesn't a college, mean... It was a murder at a college and it became a big deal. It wasn't really linked to Dungeons and Dragons. They just found the Dungeons and Dragons stuff, you know, in the college and assumed it, it was a big mistake and it caused a lot of problems for D&D in the long run. And it's kind of like people saying rock music at one point was the problem for yeah. certain crimes. Like, I believe it was 
But it um, happened to rap too. I want to say Richard Ramirez <laughs> was really into rock, and they said he that was the problem that he did it. There's also I forgot what it's called. This one group of boys that they claimed just because they dressed in black and gothic clothes, they listened to rock music. They were Satan worshippers and yeah, such, uh-huh. and it turned out they were not actually the killers of whatever this was. I don't think all rock music is Satanist. <laughs> I don't even think that modern day Satanists are particularly I don't think, dangerous. <laughs> yeah. But D&D, you can do what you want. There's a lot of great settings like Barovia. It's a very dark setting in a sort of demi-dimension ran by a vampire named Strahd von Sorovich. It's my favorite setting and a lot of people's favorite setting in D&D. I will never remember his name. You wouldn't unless you played the game and had to hear it a lot. But. Actually, you call Strahd. Strahd's easy to remember. The Curse of Strahd is the name of the book. (laughs) I want them to make a movie about that. That would be an interesting movie. And I feel like it would do well because Mm -hmm. all those Twilight fans. Yeah, Strahd had some issues. I will not go into them in case someone decides to play D&D and hasn't played that game yet. It's not too big of a secret that he is a vampire. So that's easy. And there's a vampire drinking blood on the cover of the book. So (laughs) it's a good game. The whole game is good. It's a good, it's the baseline for tabletop role-playing games, even if you don't like D&D. Like a lot of people recently have been upset with Wizards for some licensing issues. They have really started pushing their D&D Beyond app, which is, for a lot of people, it is great. If you plan on never playing anything but Dungeons and Dragons, D&D Beyond app is great. I play more games than But there's D&D. other games as well. Yeah, there's other games. But the D&D Beyond app, will you could buy your books on the app. You'll have your reference. You can search in the app. You can make your characters in the app. You can search for particular rules in the app or on the website. It's nice. I play too many other games to invest yes, in that. I think they charge a fair price. Uh, okay, so I personally don't know. For as sure. a player, all how you would much ha- is one of these books worth? Depending on where you get, average forty dollars, okay, fifty dollars well, at the most. Bad. Depends on where you considering get it. Considering the information from looking at your and books, as a player, most all players will ever need is the handbook. The dungeon master takes care of the rest. And that's why Wizards is trying to okay, make a little so bit more handbook. money. <laughs> How much is the handbook? I believe the last one I bought was $45 on Amazon. Okay, so the basic handbook, that's mm-hmm. like $45, $50, we'll yeah. say. And I believe it's discounted if you buy on D&D Beyond Good. and just have the digital version, which okay. is nice because, okay. because you can just like, so, you know, you anything. So, you can just search at the top of the page and it'll pull up the rules you need to find. Yeah, so either way, that's... It's nice. And then the <laughs> other books, how oh, much are they? About the same price. Uh, okay. I've spent hundreds of dollars on D&D books. Oh, dear. Because I run the game. I and then they books. still expect. On the app? You recently, mean? they still expect. That's why everybody's angry. They expect you, if you make content for the game, if you make a certain amount of money, to provide them some money from the income. I'm using this as the baseline <clears throat> because most people will be familiar with it. Okay, so we're using it as a baseline. If I was to say index card RPG, would you understand what I was saying? Mm-mm. Okay, if I said Dungeons and Dragons, no, I would not. If I say Dungeons and Dragons, everybody would know what that almost, is. Yeah, they don't not have a clue. They what might it, not know what it is, but they've heard the name somewhere. Yeah, so that's why the episode one is Dungeons and Dragons. It's a baseline. Beth has picked. She wants to talk about the game Holler. Correct? Yes, I want to learn about. The world holler because I live in a, a quote holler. Yes. Okay. Well, we'll cover holler, but first that'll be the week after next because we will be covering Savage Worlds next week, which is the rule system that holler is based on. So this has been Brother Knows Quest. I hope you've enjoyed it. It is probably rough. It's our first one. I have been Ramy. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. I'm Beth. Please subscribe. I have enjoyed my chat with you. Bye.